Let's welcome Linda King from Australia to our show, Lifestyle with Dr. Moby. Linda, how are you doing? Good to see you. Thank you for coming to our show. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So um, I'm an Amazon author, travel writer and blogger and founder of The Smart Travelista. Um, the Smart Travelistas, I created that uh, through my passion for travel, but then also saving money while doing that. So I think traveling well without the cost is always everyone dying. Yeah, yeah. And that is the important thing. Now with, with COVID, there's been a lot of talk about travel. So let's talk a little bit about that. So tell me a little bit, when did you start uh, doing uh, this travel blog? Yeah, um, I started it this year, um, but I've been travel writing probably seriously for about the last two years. Um, but yeah, that was um, sort of born through not being able to travel through COVID. Um, so just sort of funneling all my travel passion into the writing. And, and also tell me a little bit of um, where have you traveled so far? Gosh. Um, through America, through the States, um, throughout all of Europe, through Asia, through Australia and around the Pacific. So I traveled to quite a number of countries um, over probably a number of years. Still still a lot to, to travel to though, once COVID allows. Uh, also, I'd like to know from you is what is your favorite destination usually, uh, you know, where you feel you really have to go? I think Europe's probably my favorite destination. I love also the States, the USA, um, but yeah, probably Europe, just for the diversity and mm -hmm. you know, different. You know, And uh, so you like traveling to uh, states? Yeah, yeah, I think it's really great. Um, the East Coast, West Coast, uh, down south as well. Um, yeah, I've looked, there's so many wonderful places in the world. There's just not enough time to see them all. But yeah, it certainly um, you never run out of places to travel to. Okay, also tell me a little bit about your, um, usually how did you start writing about uh, travel? I, I know a lot of people do different hobbies and they, so w what made you think that, you know, writing will help or, you know, help a lot of folks around? Sure, yeah, look, um, I've always traveled pretty much all my life. Um, and I used, when you travel, you, you get asked questions. I used to so obviously talk with other travelers and they would I would always be giving them tips on how to do things and they're like have you got a book have you got a blog you should be sharing this information um, and I thought yeah too many people were asking me so you know family and friends are always asking for travel tips but other travelers that I'd met so I thought you know what probably about time that I start writing these things down and sharing it with everyone else um, so that's sort of how it started mm -hmm. So basically, you started uh, with travel. Of course, you wanted to put for everybody else to get a benefit of this, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So well, tell me, what is uh, what uh, you like more about podcasting, or do you like more writing? I think I like both. So you've you've got your you've got the product that you write and create. And then podcasting is a way of communicating and engaging with people around that content. Um, so I think it's probably a balance. I, I like both. It's, it's about the communication with the creativity of writing the book that you're communicating, but the podcasting is actually just a different form of that communication um, and engagement with people. Also, Linda, uh, I know you're an, uh, you have a book author and you have written several books. So tell me about those books. Sure, yes. Yeah. So I've got four books out. Um, the first one I thought was a good introductory. So it's um, The Smart Travelist to God, Finding the Best Travel Bargains and Managing Your Budget. So that's really like an introduction into um, 
taking on the travel booking for yourself to save money, sort of, and how to save money while you're doing that. The second book was um, the best overseas bargain shopping. So some people go uh, traveling to shop. So that's a good book. It gives a few destination tips and, and guides. The third book um, was how to increase your airline loyalty points and fly for free. So a lot of people use airline miles um, and build them to actually then reduce the costs of flying. So that's also a, a really good book. And the fourth one, which I brought out probably in the last few months, was how to protect your travel health and safety. So um, with COVID and, and, you know, the pandemic, thought it was a, re a real timely sort of book to bring out. Um, travel health has always been really, really important. So, you know, with vaccinations, if you're going to developing countries. And safety is always a good one as well. Um, you know, your, the safety um, standards where you travel may not be the same as your home. So it's always really mind, good to be mindful about those things when you're traveling as well. You want to go to a place and arrive in one piece and then leave that the same way. Um, so yeah, that's probably a bit of a rundown on the books. Okay. Also, I have a question about, um, you know, some of the books. Um, tell me a little bit about them title wise. Sure, yeah, so um, they're all under the Smart Travelista series, um, but they're around the travel tips. Um, so, um, yeah, so finding the best travel bargains and managing your budget, best overseas bargain shopping, how to increase your airline loyalty points and fly for free, and how to protect your travel health and safety. Um, so, yeah, just relevant topics that the traveller would need or potentially need to consider when they're traveling um, and they are handy little guides that they could take with them um, while they're traveling or, or at the preparation stage as well. Um, but it's just really a handy guide that will, you know, give you um, common sense ways to protect yourself when you're traveling and ideally save money so you can do more travel. Okay. Okay. Also, I want to ask you, um, you were telling me a little bit about your books. Um, so tell me, are these all in English or they are mostly in different languages also? So all the books are in English. Um, so yeah, I haven't got them translated into other languages yet. Um, but I'm finding that I'm getting quite a, a number of different countries, um, which obviously English speaking, that are reading the books. Um, but yeah, I've had quite a cross section of different country, different customers from different countries reading them. I think I had one from Brazil the other week. Someone had bought it from Brazil. So yeah, mainly in English speaking and um, yeah, maybe translation in the future into other languages. Uh, also, I'd like to ask you about um, uh, what are the future, um, tell us a little bit about what are the future things you have in mind uh, regarding your travel? Sure. Um, so books or, or, or travel plans? Yeah. Yeah. So travel plans, um, well, I'm fully vaccinated, so hopefully um, when a Australia opens up the borders, I'll be able to travel um, international. So I'm looking potentially to go to London and, and parts of Europe. Um, travel plans for the books. I've got two books on the on the horizon at the moment that I'm still writing. Um, one's around um, a little bit more health related um, and second one's sort of for more solo, solo travellers. Some tips around that. Um, but um, actually, in the future, in the next few months, I've actually um, participating in a, a travel, virtual travel event, which is very exciting, the Travel Symposium. Um, and that's gonna be a collection of travel authors, uh, travelers, bloggers, all talking about different um, topics around travel. So that's mm -hmm. also an, another quite exciting thing that's happening um, on the 6th and 7th of November. Um, so yeah, a lot of things on the, on the ball and planned for uh, for the next six months and then into the future. Okay. Also, tell me a little bit about with COVID. Um, COVID. You know, what has changed or and what has not changed? 
Yeah, with COVID, I think for me as an Australian, we haven't been able to travel for nearly the last two years. The borders have been closed, um, as with all the other, other countries in the world, we're vaccinating. We've got a vaccination program happening at the moment. I think um, we've got about 54% of the population that are vaccinated. Um, but I think we're looking at 70 to 80% before we open up the borders. So domestically, uh, interstate as well as international. So yeah, if, for Australians as other countries in the world, we've um, not been able to travel. So there's a lot of people that are really ready to travel. Um, so I think once that happens, we'll, have, we'll be seeing a lot more travel happen. Um, but yeah, you know, um, we've had various lockdowns as a lot of other countries have had in, around the world as well. At the mm -hmm. moment, we're in lockdown, mm -hmm. as well as uh, New South Wales, so Sydney is also in lockdown. So um, yeah, we're just waiting until we reach that target um, of 70 to 80. And then I think things will get a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Um, Linda, also, I want to ask you, do you also give advice to people about travel, like uh, where they should, things they should really look for or places they need to visit before they die? Yeah, I think at the moment I'm doing a lot of advice through the travel blogging. Uh -huh. um, I do actually have a full-time job, so a lot of what I do with this is sort of on the, as a side hustle. Um, but certainly, yeah, I'd be exploring giving, being sort of a more of a, travel coach, I suppose, or give travel advice um, when I do have time. Um, but that's probably in the future. But yeah, people come to me for travel advice all the time. I get quite a lot of communication um, and try and help out as much as possible. I think really with the Smart Travel Estra, it's about helping people, giving them tips, you know, making the travel more cheaply and travel more So, so definitely you give a lot of advice about uh, things to see or places to visit. Absolutely. So um, okay. previously I was a travel agent, so um, that was part of what I did as my job. Mm -hmm. Also tell me what are the, some of the mistakes somebody does when they try to do travel planning, you know? I think the main mistake I think that people make is they go at the really popular times which is the most expensive so I think mm -hmm. if you can go on sort of lower or shoulder seasons you'll mm -hmm. get the prices will be a lot less expensive mm -hmm. so, so, are, so what you're saying they sometimes kind of uh, miscalculate uh, their expenses or they they tend to over spend when they travel? I think they spend more before they travel, so they're paying more for their airfares and their accommodation mm. and touring mm. because they're not looking at potentially times of the year which might be cheaper. Mm -hmm. And also tell me a little bit about some of the places where you would really like to go and have not visited. So one place that's on the um, bucket list is um, Greece. Have not been to Greece. So uh -huh. I'm ho hoping to go there. And also Russia. I've been to Russia and I think that would be quite an interesting place to visit. Mm. And what about China? Did you go to China? Yeah, I've been to China, um, Hong okay. Kong. And, and how was it? Yeah, it's, it's different, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, Asia as a, as a continent is very interesting. It, it's very diverse. Mm -hmm. Also tell me, is it uh, true that when you go to China, then you feel that, you know, a lot of people don't know about uh, China. I mean, there's so much to learn or so much to see. Uh, probably world has not known China for, for much of its culture. Yeah, I think it's a, a lot of it's untouched and I don't think we know too much about China. Um, but it's a very interesting place. But it's very diverse. So you could go to a place like Shenzhen, which is sort of on the border of Hong Kong. Mm. That's very different to other places 
say like Beijing or Shanghai. Um, but yeah, it, it's a very interesting place and a lot to see there. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously it, it, the culture and and regulations are a little bit different to the rest of us. Mm -hmm. You just need to keep that in mind when you're traveling there. Mm -hmm. That is true. And what about uh, food? Which part do you really like when you travel? Food. I think Italy's got some lovely food and also France. Mm. Um, but China's got lovely food as well. So yeah. Yeah. I think if you're a traveller that's looking for, for the food element, you just want to go, okay, what's my favourite food? Mm. Also tell me a little bit about also when you travel, do you enjoy kind of learning new culture and making sure, you know, you can learn and connect? Yeah, so before I travel, I try and do a lot of research on the country that I'm travelling to. Mm -hmm. um, what I try and do is learn a few foreign language words as well, because that always helps. So when you know, you know, hello, goodbye, and all, all those sorts of words, how much is it? I think that helps um, bridge and, and help with relationships when you're going to new countries. And also, it's just about um, respecting people's cultures, like countries' cultures. Mm -hmm. But you've got to do the research on that before you travel, so you're aware of that. Mm. And tell me a little bit about culture, or has it happened that sometime when you travel, you realize that people have not really known their culture, or they are kind of still learning about that? Do you ever feel that? Yeah, I think it's an, an, an evolving thing. So you might think you know about a culture, but you really need to live it to, to know more about it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for instance, someone might think they know a lot about Australia mm -hmm. and our culture. Yeah. You might know the tip of the iceberg, but then if you spend time here, you learn a lot more. So it's about that experience when you travel. Mm -hmm. You think you know, but then you learn more. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever traveled to North Pole? No. <laughs> or, or, or not, or Antarctic, no. But um, we actually do flights in Australia that will not take you to the North Pole, but take you to Antarctic. So it's you're in the air, you don't obviously land, but you can do those sorts of flights from Australia where you can go to the Antarctic, which is sort of mm. the South Pole. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably really untouched by a lot of people. Mm. I have been to Scandinavia, hoping to go up to maybe Iceland or Greenland. I think that's probably as far as I'd get, as far as the North Pole's concerned. Also tell me a little bit about space travel. Do you think that's going to be reality pretty soon? I think it depends on people's money and their finances. I think if you've got a billionaire backing you, and sending you up into space, then that's really good. <laughs> but I think it's probably going to be out of the reach of most people. But you never yeah. know in the future, it might become really cheap. But I think yeah. you're yeah. thinking about from now to the next 10 years, I think it's only for the really rich. Yeah. Well, I was reading they were coming up with a cheaper version too. You know, they were making a big balloon type deal where you know people can instead of the spacecraft it'll be a balloon huge balloon and then it'll take up to the suborbital area you know and yeah. then people will enjoy great views and come back it'll be far cheaper far cheaper yeah i think it's really interesting what they're doing um mm. and amazing really uh, mm. to see what they do so, in the future so yeah thank you for sharing so tell us uh, my audience a uh, final message and where they can check you out sure yeah so if you're interested in reading any or seeing any of my books go to amazon.com um, i'm under the smart travelista guide um, but if you want to get in, get in contact with me i'm on the smart travelista.com mm -hmm. also on facebook twitter and um, instagram mm -hmm. Uh, under the Smart Travelista and on Twitter it's the underscore Travelista. Um, if you're interested in getting involved in the travel event, the virtual travel event, check out my website, it's got all the details. 
Um, but please feel free to reach out to me. I always love a chat, especially about travel and about saving money. Well, thank you for coming to our show and it's always a pleasure. Travel is my favorite too. And I always want to learn more and more about because you can connect with so many people and cultures by traveling. And you really know first-hand experience rather than just reading in the book or watching a movie. So I think best is go out and travel. You can do local travel. It's very good. Everybody can do local because of COVID. Um, but I'm sure if you get a chance, just learn different cultures as well as food and travel sites. Right. Thank you once again, Linda, for coming and uh, taking time to explain all this. Take care. Thank you, Dr. Moby. Take, Take care. care. Bye. Bye-bye.